Hi everybody, Trip and Sister here and Striking Viking. And we are in the old North Cemetery of Concord, New Hampshire. And there is the eternal resting place of Franklin Pierce, 14th President, President of the United States. States. I've never been to the uh, burial place of any of our presidents. You've so never this been is in any of the president's bedrooms before either. I've never been in any of the president's <laughs> bedrooms before either. He's right until yesterday. So here it is. And we learned when we were at the Pierce Manse the other day that uh, Franklin and his wife and two of their children are buried here, but a third child they don't know where who that died child is. in infancy, either from typhoid fever or one Crib of those death. things which takes children off early. Uh, she actually had the child in a town that she came from south of here, and when the child died, nobody knows where he was buried, although there was an infant cemetery, and nobody knows, knows where the where infant that is. cemetery is. Yeah, they've lost track of it, so, yeah. So here are uh, their children. And we're told that the Pierce family is still quite large um, here in uh, New Hampshire. So, uh, you know, I guess the grand, the uh, not grandchildren, but you know, he had brothers and and all that, and they had kids. So, this is where they are. This is our 14th president. Isn't that something? I've never seen the such, you know. I, oh, uh, you know, I've seen it on television. Well, not even this one. I haven't even seen this one on television. But the very tall uh, monument, gravestone, grave marker. Um, this is the oldest cemetery in Concord. So um, a lot of the stones here are, are, you know, these people have been here well over a hundred years. And uh, and they bought for their entire families. Uh, unlike today, it seems like sometimes when someone passes away, the family has to scramble and figure out where are we going to put them, who's going to pay for it, and all that. And uh, these people have been here a very, very long time, and they made sure that their loved ones had some place to be laid to rest. Uh, as you can see here, this one, Benjamin Grover. Um, I don't know when he died. His wife Caroline. She died March 3rd, 1840. These people have been here, and then he uh, evidently he married again, or he was cheating. Who <laughs> says Lucy M., his wife, died 1884. So they married quickly a lot of times after uh, their spouse would pass away because they wanted to continue to have children and they wanted their name to continue. Uh, there wasn't uh, a whole lot of emphasis on birth control. They had large families, or they tried to have large families. Uh, back then, a lot of things would kill children. SIDS, you know, sudden in infant death syndrome and, and things like that. So, um, but this is the oldest cemetery here. Uh, it's a historical cemetery. And... <laughs> So for those of you who felt like the drive-bys wasn't getting it, I'm here. Here I am. And uh, it's warm. We've been out all day walking around gravestones and eating chicken. So the chicken helped. Let me see where Mr. Viking's going over here. It's a weird way to spend your birthday, Mr. Viking, but here we are. I offered for us to go back to the rig. Is this a baby? This is the stone of an infant who died. The little carving of a baby at rest. Ella, Edward. Yeah, they had uh, large family plots. Very large. This is the uh, John Hatch George. I have no idea who he was, but uh, born the day, died the year that my grandfather was born. Wow. Okay, you guys, 
it's pretty warm I'm gonna walk over to the other side where it looked like there were gravestones that were just kind of chiseled in by hand I mean I know this was kind of chiseled in by hand anyway but they were really chiseled in by hand and some of them are in pretty bad repair if you can see that here's an example of one you can't even really read it that's not too bad that's looks like it was done with some type of an engraving tool uh, but there are some that you have a hard time seeing so New Hampshire is considered the granite state, so I don't imagine it was hard for anybody to get a tombstone. Uh, Obadiah Peters of Rumford, John Bean of Brentwood, and John Lufkin of Kingston, soldiers engaged in defense of New Hampshire frontier massacred by the Indians on the hop. Hopkinton Road, August 11, 1746, erected by the Society of Colonial Wives in the state of New Hampshire. Isn't that something? Wow. Mary, massacred by the Indians, August 11, 1746. Mary, widow of Samuel, died August 10, 1817. This is quite something. You can't even read this one. It's just, it's uh, rubbed out. This one, uh, 1777 to 1796. Wow. Moses H. Bradley. Yes. Died June 22nd, 1834. All righty. My goodness. Yes, this is, I think this is probably the oldest Some cemetery. Some old dead folks in here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think they stopped aging a long time ago. Um, anyway, it's quite warm. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a historical tour through one of the uh, nation's oldest cemeteries. And uh, I'm really not a morbid person. You know, when it comes to... Um, military campaigns and things like that uh, I'm just I don't know I guess I'm just a soldier at heart so anyway all right you guys well <laughs> happy birthday Mr. Viking <laughs> I did offer for us to leave he didn't want to go all right you guys keep chipping